Today, we'll be comparing different brands of contact sensors that support Matter to see which one that you should buy for your smart home. Each sensor will be ranked on five key different categories and will receive an overall score at the very end. And at the very end of the video, I'll share with you my overall thoughts and which Matter-enabled contact sensor I would personally recommend. Now, if you don't know what Matter is, I made a whole video explaining what Matter is, how it works, and what you need that I will leave linked down in the description below, right below that like button. Today, we'll be comparing contact sensors from Tuo, Eve, and Akara. First up is one by Tuo, a new smart home brand that is making Matter-enabled smart devices. You'll notice their contact sensor is on the larger side compared to Eve, though not as large as Akara that we'll be looking at later on. A matter code is included in the box and on the sensor body in a coin battery is inside, rated for two years of usage. There's screws and holes for mounting on the wall or a door and strong adhesive. I couldn't find any information about the gap range between the sensor body and the magnet, but it does seem to be wider than Eve and Akara's. It's rated for indoor use only, but there is a weatherproof enclosure that you can get for this sensor so you can use it outdoors. They are not sponsoring this video, but I thought you might like to know that. So for design, it gets a 3 out of 5 from me. The Tuo sensor works over thread and no additional app or account is required to use this contact sensor. However, this does mean that you are not able to adjust any settings, update the firmware, or have additional features beyond what you would get in the smart home ecosystem that you're using this contact sensor in. I'm assuming you can update this contact sensor from the Apple Home app like you can with Eve, but I'm not entirely sure and there's not really a way to tell. Now this may or may not be a problem for you if you want features beyond seeing if a door is opened or closed, like seeing history data about the sensor or being alerted if a door has been left open for five minutes like you get with Eve and Akara. I personally need a bit more features than just the basics, so for the features, it gets a four out of five from me. Which leads us to our next category, smart home ecosystem. Systems. The setup process for the Tuo contact sensor in multiple ecosystems, including Amazon, Google Home, and Apple Home, was very easy and I had no issues. In the Apple Home app, the sensor can be labeled as various things that can be opened, like a door, garage, and a window. It's responsive when open or closed. The Home app reflects the change pretty quickly. Here you can see the battery level. We'll come back to this. In the Amazon ecosystem, the sensor is a little slow to respond when opened or closed and is faster to respond in the Google Home ecosystem. Once the sensor was connected to all three ecosystems, the sensor just stopped working. The sensor status would not update across each ecosystem whenever it changed. So whenever it was labeled as open in the Apple Home ecosystem, the status would not update in either Amazon or Google. For that reason, for ecosystem experience, it gets a three out of five from me. Next is battery life. I used the Tua sensor extensively for a week in various ecosystems and their battery life remained at 100%. So battery life seems to be very good and gets a five out of five from me. The Tua contact sensor is priced at $30, the same price as the Akara P2 sensor that we'll be looking at later on and is cheaper than Eve. However, considering the lack of features compared to other brands, which may or may not be a problem for you, I think it's fairly priced. So it gets a four out of five and it gets an overall score of a 3.8 out of five. As you'll see next, there are better options available with more features that you might want to consider instead, like the Eve door and window sensor. The most most expensive matter contact sensor on the market. But does more expensive mean higher quality and work better? Let's find out. So Eve actually makes two contact sensors, one that works only with Apple Home and one that supports Matter and works with all ecosystems. I've reviewed the Apple Home version in a previous video comparing all non-Matter HomeKit contact sensors and I'll leave that link down in the description below under that like button. Both versions of the Eve sensor are the same size and include the same parts. There's an extra Matter code in the box and on the side of the sensor itself along with a large DC battery rated for about two years of usage. It's fairly easy to replace the battery by sliding the cover off and then back on, but these hooks on the back can be a pain. Tuo and Akara are definitely easier to replace the battery. The adhesive in the box is okay. It can be susceptible to peeling and not sticking that well if you're moving it around often. It's rated for indoor use only, but again, there is a weatherproof enclosure available that you can get so you can use this sensor outdoors. The Eve door window sensor is thicker than the Tuo and Nakara contact sensor, oftentimes requiring spacers for alignment. While this may be helpful for doors that are not flush to be flush together whenever the door is closed, the sensor can cause more problems than it's actually trying to solve. 
as was the case for me. When I was testing the EVE sensor, I had to use spacers on a flush door to get the sensor to align correctly. It made this product more difficult to use because if I had moved it to a different door in another room, I may have to use more or less spacers, and they're not the easiest to break apart. The original car contact sensor that I use all throughout my home has a wider gap range than EVE, so even though some of my doors are not flush, the gap range is wider than EVE and allows the sensor to detect open or closed without requiring extra spacers. So this may or may not be an issue for you depending on if your doors are flush or not and what you want to install this sensor on. So for design, a 2 out of 5. The EVE sensor works over thread and prides itself on strong privacy, but I don't find that to be as big of a selling point compared to a non-matter contact sensor. Since all the sensors in this video don't require a third party app or an extra account just to use them in the Apple Home ecosystem. Now, other ecosystems are different, but if we're just talking about using this contact sensor in the Apple Home ecosystem, then all Matter-enabled contact sensors are designed to work entirely locally without a cloud, no registration, no tracking, and have fully local connectivity. Eve does have its own app that is not required in order to use this sensor, but it does give you access to many additional features and settings you may like, including viewing the current status and an event timeline, when it was last opened, and how many times the sensor has been open or closed based on various dates and times, along with seeing if the sensor is using the thread protocol for connection. However, it does lack certain features that you may need, like alerting you if the sensor has been opened or closed for a certain amount of time, and the ability to disable the flashing red LED when the sensor is open or closed, which I found to be odd. What I also found to be odd was the multi-ecosystem experience with the EVE door and window sensor. The Apple Home setup experience went smoothly and responds pretty quickly when it's opened or closed. The ability to update the sensor directly from the Home app is convenient, but there's limited control over the update process unless you do automatic updates. Connecting the EVE sensors to the Google Home ecosystem went smoothly and is responsive as well as in the Amazon ecosystem, but just like Tuo, the status did not sync properly whenever it was opened or closed. It seems to be frozen with Amazon, it would not update at all. So for ecosystem experience, a 3 out of 5. To test the battery life of the EVE contact sensor, I connected it to Apple Home, Google, and Amazon, opened and closed it over 100 times, and the battery life was still at 100%. Battery life has been very good and gets a five out of five. The EVE door window sensor is the most expensive contact sensor available, priced at $50. However, considering all the features that it has, I think the price is fairly reasonable. So for price, a four out of five, and an overall score of a 3.6 out of five the new Acara Matter Contact Sensor P2, an updated version of their non-matter contact sensor that connects over Zigbee that I'm a huge fan of. But what I'm not a fan of is the design of the P2 sensor. As you can already tell, it's massive, and there's many design differences here that make this sensor different from the rest. For starters, the body and the magnet is about twice the size as the original Acara sensor and is larger than Tuo and Eve. Another design difference is the P2 sensor is more shaped like a cylinder and not flat like the others, limiting where you could install this sensor at. More on this later. You really don't get much else in the box, just both pieces and a flat magnet piece, which is used for installing this sensor in tighter areas where the main magnet piece may not fit, and it can be installed vertically or horizontally. I wonder if this small magnet piece would even be needed if the sensor itself was much smaller like the original version. A button is on the front for pairing, and inside the sensor is a large battery, similar in size to the EVE battery. Now, a car does not quote how much battery life you can expect with this sensor, which I found to be very strange. The adhesive is pre-installed on the back and is quite strong. The P2 sensor is rated for indoor use only and so is the original Acara sensor, but there is a weatherproof enclosure that you can get for each sensor that allows you to use it outdoors. I've actually been using the original contact sensor outside for the last six months and they were great outside. Battery life does take a small hit since it's exposed to harsher conditions than being indoors, but not enough to be a real problem. So for design, it gets a one out of five because the original model, design-wise, is way better and more practical in every way. 
Next is features, and there's one advantage the P2 sensor has over the original model, and that is it connects over thread and does not require an Acara hub to work with Apple Home. Whereas the original model does require an Acara Zigbee hub to work with Apple Home. As of this recording, the Acara P2 sensor does not work in the Acara Home app, and you don't get any additional features beyond what you get in the smart home ecosystem that you're using it in. However, Acara will soon be releasing the Acara M3 hub and the P2 can pair to this hub, allowing for more features like adjustable sensitivity, the ability to program the power button to run automations, a tamper alarm, and more. There's no official word on when the hub will be released, so right now it has as much features as the 2 contact sensor at a much larger size. Now keep in mind that you should buy a device based on the features that it has today, not on the features that it could or will have in the future, because who knows when those features will actually arrive. Even though the original Acara contact sensor does require an Acara hub, it does work in the Acara app and allows for more features like the Eve sensor has, including past open and closed activity from the last hour, day, or week, how long it has been open for, and the ability to use in automations with other Acara devices. Like if a door is open, then it can turn off a camera or it can disarm a security system, and you can receive alerts when a door has been open for X amount of time. So for features, I give the Acara P2 sensor a three out of five based on the features that it has today, not on the features that it could or will have in the future. Using the Acara P2 sensor in multiple ecosystems like Amazon, Google, and Apple Home was unlike using Tuo or Eve, starting first with connecting to Apple Home. Since there was no matter QR code in the box or even on the sensor itself, even though there are supposed to be one inside according to the manual, I had to use the longer method of typing in the code, which is not a big deal, but being able to just scan a QR code is much easier, especially if you need to reset the sensor down the road. In the Apple Home app, it is responsive when showing open or closed, but one weird thing you'll notice is that there is no section for battery life, so you don't know how much battery life is left. The P2 sensor does connect and work in Amazon and Google, but like the 2O and Eve sensor, I found it to really only work reliably in the Apple Home ecosystem. It does not accurately change the status in Amazon or Google whenever it's opened or closed, unlike the original car contact sensor that worked with all three ecosystems very well. So for ecosystems, it gets a two out of five. Since a car does not advertise a rough estimate of how long the battery life is, besides long battery life, I cannot say how the battery life is. The original contact sensor is rated for two years, so I'm assuming and hoping a bigger battery on the P2 model means longer battery life. I can't say how the battery life is, so it gets a 1 out of 5 from me. The Acara P2 sensor is priced at $30, the same as the 2O sensor, but is larger in size. So for price, it gets a 2 out of 5, and an overall score of a 2 out of 5. So now that we have looked at all the differences between 2O, Acara, and Eve, which matter contact sensor should you buy for your smart home? Well, as usual, it depends on your specific needs and preferences. 2O is a good basic option for basic features and works well, at least in Apple Home. The Eve sensor is a good choice if you want to see detailed records about the sensor, though if you want to use it in Apple Home only, I'd recommend getting the Apple Home version instead. The Acara P2 sensor is the largest contact sensor, and as of today, the original model works better, is smaller for more versatile placement, and is more affordable if you want to add more down the road. None of them really work well in all three ecosystems, at least from my experience, which is one of the big selling points of a matter-enabled device. So which contact sensor would I personally buy? Well, for me, honestly, I'm not a big fan of any of them. None of them offer the features that I want in the size and the price that I like. But if I had to pick one, I would personally go with Tuo because it offers the basic features that I need at a pretty good price point. And although I'm not a big fan of the design, it's a pretty good option for a matter contact sensor. Eve does not offer enough features for me for the higher price tag and the Acara P2 is too large for my liking. With that being said, I think the original contact sensor by Acara is the perfect sensor for me and and maybe for you as well. You're able to create advanced automations with it like open door alerts, which I use often as a reminder to close back a door after letting my dogs out to use the bathroom. It's small and compact, and very responsive and works in all ecosystems well. And best of all, it's affordable. Now granted, you do have to have an Acara hub, which does drive up the cost a bit, especially if you're not already in the Acara ecosystem. But if you do use other Acara devices like their smart button or their smart lock, it's an affordable sensor that is rock solid and I do believe is worth the extra cost. But that's my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think about matter contact sensors down in the description below. Here's another video that I think you'll like and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.